I want to begin with the significant difference between what a love coach is and what therapy is. So Chris and I have been going to therapy for about six months. And I wouldn't say it was completely worthless or that we didn't get anything from it. It was very powerful and it was very supportive of us. And we didn't necessarily have anything wrong. It was just trying to be preventative. The difference is every time we would go to a therapy session, the conversation would be completely surrounded around something that went wrong. This week, we're struggling with, you know, a conflict. This week, we're struggling with sex. This week, we're struggling with getting a new dog. And it was like, what's the struggle? What's the problem? And then we break it down. And every time we came out of therapy, we would feel worse. We would feel like, oh my gosh, we still have more problems to solve. We feel like it's indefinite. Like we're never going to be in a good place because there's always more things. And we felt like each of us didn't really get the tools or techniques to prevent that problem from happening again. It was just resolving a problem, but basically reacting, right? The difference is when we stepped into this love workshop, it's a completely different approach. Instead of what's your problem today, how do we solve it? And then let's meet back for the next problem. It was, what's your definition of the most ideal, magnificent, incredible marriage you could ever dream of? And let's get you there. What would get you closer to that? Um, what do you have to create to make more of that? So instead of reacting and just solving the minute problem facing you today, it's what's your biggest ideal of marriage and commitment and love and partnership? And then what can we do to take a step forward and create that? So this felt like moving backwards and this felt like moving forward. One of the first things that we learned that was just the most profound for me was acknowledging your partner's behavior in the moment, but multiple times. So very often, let's say your love language is words of affirmation, which is mine. Huh. Surprise, surprise. Then we often see where that partner is not creating words of affirmation. But what we don't see is where they are creating words of affirmation. And so in this scenario where I would like more words of affirmation, instead of identifying where they're not, start to identify where they are. And then this is the trick. Instead of just saying it once, let's say we had a nice dinner, I cooked dinner and Chris said to me, you're such a great cook. Wow, I'm so impressed by you. Then I can say in that moment, thank you so much. I really love when you compliment me. Then the trick is a day later, you say, wow, yesterday I am still stuck on the idea that like you loved my cooking. And it made me so happy when you told me that you loved my cooking because I love cooking for you. And then this is the trick. It's a third time. A week later, you say a reference back to the same action. Because what you're trying to get is a recreation of the behavior you desire rather than a destruction of the behavior that you're not getting. And so a week later, you say, oh my gosh, I am still thinking about your compliment because it just it gave me affirmation. It gave me more desire to cook for you. It gave me exactly what I, what I love about you. And so thank you for that. And, and thank you for complimenting my cooking. So it, the difference is the significant action required to create the behavior you desire versus destroying the behavior you don't desire. And so it's really positive reinforcement versus negative reinforcement.